Hey guys, Sens here. Today we'll be reacting to The Wild World of Compelled Dead by Daylight by Killer Whale. This is a video that gives an insight into the competitive world by an outsider. And I think I have a lot of things to add to this and things that I can say. I already did this on stream, but I feel like I missed the point a little bit on a few of those things and I want to redo it. So here we go. Serious? Okay, I'll be real with you. I originally wrote this video months ago just to make fun of Comp DBD, but after taking a dive down the rabbit hole, I have to admit that there are a lot of misconceptions that it gets unfairly criticized for. Don't worry, there's still plenty to make fun of, which Damn. we will get to. But to take a look at both sides, let's at least start with the dumb things the haters say. That really just comes from a lack of knowledge about the competitive scene. Like any esports scene, Comp DBD consists of teams of players playing custom games against each other in order to win some kind of tournament. Sounds simple enough, right? But since DBD is an asymmetrical 4v1 game with heavy RNG elements, the immediate question from most players upon learning about competitive DBD is, why the f*** would you do that? To which I mean, I don't think DBD is actually that crazy RNG. That's my honest opinion. Um, even if you were to not take any rules, I think the best teams would win more often than not. Like, um, you need skillful interactions, and I think an average game of DBD has enough skillful interactions to have enough skill expression for the better party to win more often than not. Which most comp players have a pretty simple answer. They like the game. A lot and optimizing and learning every part of it playing versus other people who really like DBD is the next step for them after they grow tired of the busted mechanics, bad matchmaking, and terrible teammates in public lobbies. Okay, I don't think this is uh, generally uh, the reason why everyone gets into comp, so I personally just care about what the best players in every game do that I play and every game that I have played in the past. So if I'm really interested in the game, then I will start looking for the best players and I will see how do they play. And I think a lot of people walk that way. And that's what I also did in DBD after I had like 2000 hours. And yeah, that's how I got initially interested in comp. It was not really experience. It was not really about playing comp. It was more about like seeing how do other people do things. So the most popular response to comp DBD, that is laughing at the idea of it or saying that there's no money in it or calling it a waste of time or for some reason claiming it doesn't exist. I mean, I can understand this point. So comp DBD um, has no backing by sponsors, pretty much like very, very few. And also it is made by the players, not by the organizers. So this guy unironically has a little bit of a point here because um, Unlike other esports scenes, um, there is no real money in this. But I mean, everyone in comp is just in it for the passion. I think that is a beautiful thing, in my opinion. And there is a lot of interest added at times. So the Winter Invitational had an average viewership of 10,000 people watching at any given time. That is quite ridiculous. And obviously, at that point, you have to admit there is interest in it. And I'm not the only one who cares. Makes about as much sense as making fun of any other hobby. I play comp DBD because I like DBD is, in my opinion, a good enough reason to not be mocked relentlessly, even if it is kind of funny since most... I don't think you need a reason, to be honest. I don't think the, the, the reason really... I, I don't think it's really relevant at all, to be honest. DBD gameplay is such a shit show. Which leads to the next question people ask. How can you possibly make a 4v1 game competitive with how much RNG and busted crap there is in it? And the answer is just as simple. You can't, but also add a lot of extra rules. Band I disagree with this. I think you can actually make it competitive. Even if you were to host a tournament with no rules, the best teams would win. Perk list for every killer and survivor. Banned perks for every survivor team versus specific killers. Banned add-ons, items, specific map picks per killer. Banned RNG actions. The list goes on. The goal of all of these bans is to make the game as skill-focused as possible. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of history to all of these bands and they have developed over time. And there's a reason for almost all of them. Like, uh, every tournament has a little bit of a different rule set, but like, it's pretty much the same thing. RNG or lack of skill expression, if one of those two things exist, then um, it's probably going to get banned. By limiting RNG or things deemed way too strong for the amount of effort you put in. And honestly, they do a pretty good job here. 
If you're a main of, say, Doctor, and you could guarantee a decent map and no Calm Spirit players every time you queued up at only the cost of your eerie add-ons, wouldn't you take it? Of course it's not perfect. For example, maps still have RNG within their tiles and... Okay, one thing that is funny about this, um, this is something that I think there's a huge disconnect between the casuals and the um, comp players because casuals think killer versus survivor because that's how DBD is supposed to be played. That's how everyone plays it, right? But in the comp setting is actually team versus team and you could have like a ridiculous uh, favored setup that favors the killer side a lot. But it doesn't really matter because one of the killers just has to perform better. And that's what it really comes down to, right? Like create an environment where skill matters for the outcome as much as possible. Gen spawns, but tournament organizers do try to get as close as possible to a fair game. This is a really big point that most haters don't understand. Competitive DBD might as well be a totally different game when compared to normal public lobby True. DBD which I'll refer to as pubs for the rest of this video. So if you are trying to make fun of CompDBD by saying, this game isn't meant to be competitive, comp players would probably just agree with you. They're well aware of how many overpowered <sighs> perks, add-ons, and items there are, as well as how much RNG, especially map RNG, can factor into a win or loss in public games. I'll let them explain this massive rule set in their own words. Okay, the thing is, uh, both sides have those things though. So it kind of like evens out. And I did this actually, that we did a showcase where everything was allowed. That was like one year ago. And it was actually quite even. It was actually quite even. And if anything, it was more on the killer side. But by then, by now, uh, stuff like the Blight Islands have been nerfed. So a little bit of things have changed. But I don't think the outcome would be would be very, way different. Like, it was pretty balanced with nothing banned at all. So map offerings for survivors, brand new parts, styptics, everything. With little to no restrictions, the amount of times the better team wins is decreased, the amount of RNG heavily increased, and skill expression decreased, all true. while significantly reducing the amount of fun playing the game. True. So I, I think for a lot of players, that last thing isn't true. So that is the absolute bit, I think, where most people, why there are so many rules and... Uh, the reason for that is because it's just less fun um, if you actually watch it with no rules at all. So if you understood, there is a showcase that I did like one year ago, um, but the game becomes a bit more stale and boring in that case. Uh, less fun interactions. True, But for comp players, it definitely is. It's personal preference. But this brings us to the last common criticism, which can't really be mitigated because it comes from DBD's core design issues. The game's most efficient strategies are often considered the least skillful by a majority of the player base on the server. So I think, I think, okay, I, I will try to answer this first. Why are people still crying about telling and saying you need to get good when top comp play is camping and telling? So first, like needing to get good and not tell. I mean, I, I think that's a bit of a weird argument. I think telling is easier to do than it is to counter. But at the same time, if survivors fail at countering it, then it is kind of on them. But on the lower skill level, it is true that it's just way easier to do than it is to counter. And comp, obviously, everyone goes in there knowing what is going to happen. Nobody's going to complain because that's why. So you go into this and everyone has the same mindset. If you go into a pub game and you try your hardest possible, you might get people who want to do their five chest archives or they just want to cleanse totems. And that is a huge disparity and these people will complain. And obviously in that game, I don't think anyone's going to have fun because of that disparity and how much you want to try to win. Majority of the player base. On the survivor side, pre-dropping pallets while the rest of the team sits on generators. On the killer side, immediate tunneling and proxy camping of one survivor. Why would any anyone want to watch this? All right, so this is a game, you can see it, this is actually from our tournament. So the first game of this set was, I think it was four hooks total. So now Wispy goes into this game and Wispy only needs to get four hooks. At that point, trading hooks just is an automatic win. That's the problem of the comp like thing obviously because like the second game is not going to be exciting if the first game was a complete failure and the win con is that easy then there's no reason to leave the hook because you chase someone you could get you could possibly get run and if you wait, uh, wait by the hook you're going to automatically win and in a competitive setting what are the competitive players going to choose obviously the easiest one where you cannot possibly lose anymore yeah that's playing for win con a bit annoying but there's no better way around this really well, most don't, which is why the idea of CompDBD is still pretty unpopular among the majority of the player base going into year 9. 
All right, okay. It's very unpopular, that is true. And especially um, if someone gets turned out, one thing that I think a lot of the pub players have to understand, though, is that the game gets really fun in comp once one survivor is dead. The reason for this is because against four survivors, it is impossible to delay the game forever. Not even a nurse or blight can do that. If the nurse or blight fails to turn one person out, then you are kind of you are gonna get survivors escape through the gate. The only way to win on the high level at the end is to get one person out there and play the three one. No other strategy can possibly compete with that. And there's no other strategy that is winning for the killers. I mean, yeah. That's why the three one is actually the exciting part because once one survivor's dead, then uh, the killer can meaningfully pressure survivors and every rotation hurts and he can actually play for the win. Meanwhile, the 4 one no matter what he does, he's not really that threatening. So for in comp, watching 3-1 is just way more exciting than the 4 one However, this isn't the full story for a few reasons, and competitive DBD has actually been growing much faster than in years past. The first reason for that is DBD League, which is the main league I'm going to reference since it's the most popular, has gotten much better with balance simplification, killer variety, marketing, and finally started trying to push players away from camping too hard by making the tie-breaking win condition tied to unique hooks. All right, this is a bit of a misinfo. I think DBD League had had this system for a long, long time. DBD League was the thing that first got me into comp. I think I was in 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Might have been 2019, actually. And yeah, these uh, fast hooks giving more points or being more rewarded in comp is literally as old as comp itself. That started in like 2018, I think. So yeah, very old. And there was not even DBD League who uh, got that. And also, I think DVD League didn't change that much, to be honest, when it comes to, like, balancing and killers. They're very pretty graphics, though. Um, they're very well done, very well run orc overall, and they definitely do a good job improving um, comp as a whole. This way, if both teams do all five gens, and they have the same amount of hooks, the killer player that hooked two different people for three stages total would win over yeah. the player that hooked one person and camped them to death. That has always been a thing, though. which usually makes for a better viewing experience. Compare a modern tournament with killers like Oni, Wesker, Plague, Ghostface, and more to the Spirit and Nurse Snooze Fests of old, and you'll instantly see how much better it is to watch. Okay, I think the reason for this is actually the old balancing was just bad. And you see the rules here, right? You see how there are 50 parks banned. In this tournament, this is best of the best, I think the biggest tournament that Badalad ever had, and it's absolutely true, the balancing was every park twice. Um, for survival side. And they had a toolbox, they had a med kit against, I think, every killer, if I'm not mistaken. And nowadays, if you play against Ghostface, you don't get exhaustion, you get nothing to heal yourself, you, like, you get visionary. Like, if you look at the perks, the raw value for survivors is insanely low, and that's why someone like Ghostface can compete now. Not only that, but on this patch, I think Jens took 70 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, um, killers took longer to recover after swing. Breaking pallets took longer. So the balancing of the game um, just went a lot more into the killer's side. And also, by the way, these um, these points also reward fresh hooks. So this is already a thing in best of the best, which is quite interesting. But I think the balancing of best of the best um, was from a content creator and they didn't consider a lot of other opinions and yeah they they that's for from hexi i believe so i mean it was kind of like standard at the time and the balancing was just bad and that's why literally only the top killers could compete and even nurse and Sp old spirit by the way that was before the rework pretty much never got a kill why because there's two ds there's two deliverance there's a toolbox doing a gen in the background on 70 seconds it's just unfeasible there's camaraderie i think like, there's so many things to deal with where the killer player just doesn't stand a chance, really. And on top of that, their add-ons were restricted, which made the entire thing pretty unfair because I think there was pretty much, like, green and below add-ons, but every killer had, like, their own balancing. But, yeah, there was not much going on for BOTB. BOTB was heavily, heavily survival side. And the reason for that, yeah, was actually the balancing on survival side, in my opinion. Spirit and Nurse Snooze Fests of old, and you'll instantly see how much better it is to watch. 
The sure. second reason it's growing is that popular content creators like Ots, Hens, Otofu, and Spooky Loops have been showcasing competitive play in a much better way than comp players have. Yeah, I mean, we are the content creators, right? Content creators. So one thing to know about competitive DVD is that it's made by players for players. If you look at DVD League stuff, the majority of them are actually comp players. They're not content creators. Um, and this is the beauty of grassroots comp DVD. So um, there is no backing from sponsors or developers. This is all made by players who just have passion for the game. And they don't do it for their own gain. This is just a hobby of them. And same with I. So same with I, English. But um, the invitations that I hosted, I did that as a passion project. I don't think it was feasible. To be honest, I think it was a stupid idea looking back. Still love doing them. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I lost money and I lost time and I think I would have been better off making other content simply because, yeah, well, I mean, if you if you look at content creation as a full-time content creator, you got to look at it a little bit from a business perspective, but that is pure passion and I don't think it's very smart of me to do that. But yeah, I love comp. It's one of my hobbies. It's one thing I'm passionate about. So I will obviously support it just like the other orcs. And I think that's the beauty of DBD comp for me that it's not artificially backed by anyone and nobody is like pumping money into this as a marketing scheme. This is a passion project from the players for the players. More on that later. But the third reason it's growing is something that's hard for most DVD players to understand on first watch. When both sides accept that these boring tactics are going to be used, the games stay interesting. Yes, it sucks getting tunneled out in solo queue. Yes, it's boring to proxy camp as killer in pubs. But when a yeah, this is, comes back to the point that I mentioned earlier with the 3-1 um, in pubs. 4-1 is exciting. The moment one survivor dies, the survivors are not coordinated enough to get anything done. That is reversed in the comp setting. And yeah, I think that's one of the massive, massive disconnects because if someone watches comp for the first time, they will not have that context. They'll just go in there and that's going to be like, wow. So nothing happened, now one survivor is dead. And they're going to assume there's no interactivity in the game. But yeah, the dynamics are quite reversed. And that's something to watch out for, especially if you're not that used to comp. A full four-man team knows and accepts that a tunnel out in camp will almost definitely happen and comes to... I mean, there's an absolute... It's funny that you show uh, Eternal here because beautiful to watch how Eternal keeps the survivors alive with teamwork, pallet saves. They do such a fantastic job. And it's just a beauty, beauty to watch. Together to prevent it instead of just complaining online, it's kind of fun to watch. Yeah. Having a player pre-drop their first five pallets in a public match is boring to chase. To be honest, I don't really care if I get tunneled. In a, like, if I get tunneled by a Nurse or Blight, then sure. But like anything else, I'm totally fine with, even in pups. And I think um, that's something that I came to terms with as I got more experience. I think generally in Dead by Daylight, the more experience you get on Survivor, the less the less freedom you ask from the killer for, and the more you just accept that he does whatever he wants to some degree. And I think one reason for that is because camping and tunneling are just way easier to do than they are to counter. It's not it's not uncounterable, but yeah, for solo queue teammates, like your average solo queue team is not ready to stop a tunnel. And your average survivor will just panic and die really fast. So it's a very cheap and easy way to get wins. But the reason for that, the underlying reason is there's a disparity in how hard it is to do versus how hard it is to counter. But killers in comp have already planned for this and are setting up their dead zones, strategy, and build around it. If you have a lot of hours on killer, at some point you'll get annoyed at how easy the game can be with just a bit of tunneling and proxy camping, especially when you go out of your way to avoid it and the survivors teabag you anyway. True. Comp DBD doesn't... I mean, that is absolutely true. I think that's one thing that most of us don't consider. If you, no one will thank you for playing fair, which is actually a bit sad. Like oftentimes you'll just get called bad for playing fair, which is a bit unfortunate. But yeah, that's, uh, I think that's the nature of the asymmetrical game a little bit. Um, people just absolutely lack awareness. They have no idea what's going on. And yeah, they only emphasize with their own role but empathy goes a long way, and teabagging at the gate is just not that cool. And have this problem. Lastly, and most importantly, even with these <laughs> low skill strategies, there is a ton of skill in competitive DBD. From patience, to communication, to knowledge, to mechanics, 
And to pretend it's all just camping, tunneling, and pre-dropping instantly signals that you've never actually watched any. I'll also use a common comp player argument here. If skill doesn't matter, why do the same teams always dominate over multiple tournaments? Yep. So truthfully, I agree with the original complaint. Optimal strategies are really boring to play with or against in public games where you either stomp a bunch of idiots or have so much less control over RNG. But in a tournament? It can definitely be more interesting to try it against a group of coordinated players who accept that it's part of the game and it allows players to push themselves to the limit without having to worry about either side's made up rulebook. So wait a minute, all of this just seems like a big misunderstanding. Why would so many people be annoyed at competitive DBD when they just innocently play custom games among themselves? Well, if you ask people in the comp community, they apparently have no idea. They're just happily minding their own business while insecure pub players attack them for no reason. I think, okay, this is where we start. I think, yeah, um, I think the comp, t uh, the comp scene is also a little bit in their own bubble. And just as the casuals, they just fail to look outside their bubble and they just fail to self-reflect. And yeah, this is one of the examples. It's, I don't think, yeah, well, I mean, I think Henu missed the point a little bit, just like I did in the first time I watched this. But this in itself is the problem. After watching the comp community for a while now, a lot of their players and viewers are very much living inside a bubble. Yeah. And when you're in a I think one thing that is absolutely important to understand though, so do the casuals and everyone else. Everyone has their own takes on Dead by Daylight and where do they get them from? Their own experience. So you can obviously like adjust your bubble by watching others and you can watch comp or you can watch really experienced players and you can shape your mind that way. But everyone has their opinions. I don't think anyone is invalid or valid on these opinions. No matter what our account you have, um, I think your opin opinions are valid. Does that mean you should balance the game? Maybe not, no. In a bubble, you don't understand how you look and sound from outside of it. First True. of all, the most outspoken people either in comp or associated with the comp community are all extremely annoying. If you go to DBD Twitter, which is kind of the only place comp DBD exists outside of Discord, you'll instantly be able to tell a comp player from the incredibly smug aura of their tweets. They will often put down pub players, you know, 90 so easy to aura. I think I unironically agree with this, to be honest. I I agree with this. I mean, it's like, there's no problem, though. Like, there's no problem. Like, I had this, too. When I had, like, two chaos, I remember that was with old Metal of Man and Dead Heart. I used to run that on David, and I won a lot of my games. And I thought I'm, like, really, really good. And I think that's that's pretty much normal, and that's enabled by the matchmaking of Dead by Daylight. And, yeah, I mostly agree with this take. 9.9% .9 of the player base as bots and say they crutch on broken items and mechanics. They I don't think there's a problem with that though. We'll call any complaint or loss in public matches a skill issue. They'll have non-stop drama within their own community. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely a lot of egos and uh, they get showcased a lot and maybe that's something that should be worked on to make comp a little bit more watchable because yeah, I 100% agree that makes it hard from an outside perspective and people coming in and they're looking at this and it's just not really a good look. Probably due to the fact that most of the people who actually have time for comp DBD are teenagers. No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, you're obviously, this is why everybody. The easiest way to get. <laughs> Tell head secret. Yeah, that was the showcase actually, and X9 expanded in that showcase. Um, uh, not the most, not the most glorious thing. Um. Yeah, they are just really young people. Their competitiveness, competitiveness in general, can really easily turn into toxicity. And I think that's on everyone to realize. And if it does, then it needs to, the person itself needs to stop it. One thing that is pretty important about comp in this context is that there are no organizations um, on the team side, right? Because the teams are made by the players. And the guy who's screaming is literally the captain of said team and the team disbanded afterwards and that was it so yeah there's no uh overall organization there every organization like every tournament organizer um has different rules and different influences there were some tries to make like an overhead organization but i think people just didn't want to lose power over things they had power before and that's why like to some degree that did not happen but yeah these kind of things are 
I don't know. That's just impossible to control. You can maybe call it out a little bit more. Um, and I think maybe people can do a better job of calling that out. If the comp scene wants to get like more recognition and wants to grow mainly, then yeah, I think it's important. That's one thing that I wanted to do with the invitationals. I literally told them on the first invitation that I hosted. Maybe I can show that. Give me a second. Can I find the message? Real fast. No, I think it's deleted. Is it? No, I deleted it sadly. I, I wanted to show the first message on the winter invitation. I had a long message to the teams that I wanted them to show their best behavior just to make comp look better to the outside and maybe don't like teabag everyone, even if they're their friends, because it's just a bad look to the outside. I think a lot of comp players just have a really, really hard time understanding that concept and like internalizing how things really look to the outside and what brings us ahead and what throws us back. I think there's like a lack of understanding there. Um, yeah, because there's no media training. There are no organizations to tell players, yo, what you're doing here is maybe not that good. And maybe you need a sports psychologist. But yeah. Oh, well. Get every comp player to respond to your tweet is to post the most obvious bait ever of you sucking at the game because they will absolutely eat it up. They literally can't help themselves. <laughs> I mean, you, if you don't know the person, I mean, I never understand bait either. But I don't think that's related to my comp thing. I think that's just like, I don't know, is this guy person serious? Does he actually want advice? The Who comp knows? community is looking for any reason to show off their thousands of hours of... So Billy is so boring. I said Billy because he felt so rewarding to play and now everything is just so free. I agree with that. I actually agree with that take. Um, playing Billy and Pups now um, feels like there's, there's no competition anymore. Like the games are just incredibly free, even if you use no slowdowns. And that's not an elitist take. That is enabled by the matchmaking being incredibly loose and Billy just being an insane killer. Not only is he already insane, he's also an insane noob stomper. I think that combination is just ridiculous. Because if you play against good players, well, you're kind of sad, right? But on top of that, Billy is also ridiculously good against weaker players because he chains us to them and he kills them. And I don't think... Okay, okay, I didn't read the second part. <laughs> okay, maybe I should read fully. I see so many players with uh, less than one chaos were so mad by getting good incidents because anyone can do it. Okay, fair. I mean, yeah, well, that's. I mean, okay, that's like elitist gatekeeping. I see, I see what he's coming from. That's probably why um, that tweet is in there. Fair. I mean, yeah, that is an elitist take that is out of his bubble, and he should probably not say that. Knowledge sure. and skill in DBD. And maybe I should read fully before I answer. Usually in a way that's meant to make you feel like a <laughs> dumbass. They're wildly confused that people just like to play DBD for fun instead True. Instead of trying to improve, putting down... Yeah, I mean, that's also uh, the other way around, right? Um, where the, the people who do the other way also don't have any understanding. So it goes both ways, and I think that's not like DBD exclusive. I think that's just normal in gaming in general. I've seen it in so many games over the years. I think the first example I can give is uh, when I used to play RuneScape back in the day, and there were PvP players and PvE players. And yeah, these people always clashed because they had different objectives, they didn't care for each other, and they generally, yeah, they, they were just very weird and uh, it's it's pretty much true for every kind of game that has a split player base uh tarkov there you had the pvp chats versus the survivalists and they also didn't understand each other i think this is normal and that's just how it works to be honest i think that's just in any given game yeah and i think a lot of people need to self-reflect a little bit stop being so elitist especially on twitter on any per um what's also a bit sad is that if someone posts these kind of things, they get so many likes. They get so many likes, and then these opinions get elevated. And if you say something completely reasonable, then nobody cares. I mean, this is how social media works in a nutshell, but yeah.
maybe some people should reflect hey, a little bit interrupt this on quest for maximum skill expression i don't think it's a hot take to say that people don't really like when others are condescending and the comp community really doesn't seem to know or care how often they come across this way but hey i mean true yeah i agree but it goes uh, to be honest i think if someone says um, that pre-dropping pallets gen rush takes no skill. I think it's the, the same the other way around. Okay. There are smug elitists in every hobby. What makes DBD different? The first issue is that truthfully, DBD is a pretty mechanically simple game. Yes, it has a massive skill ceiling, but most of this is from game knowledge and experience rather than being physically demanding. There are some difficult things you can do, but you can win 99% of your games without ever learning these. I'll be honest, I've sucked at multiplayer games most of my life. All right, so he's kind of true what he's saying here. Um, I agree with the first, the the second point that you can win um, most of your games without actually being mechanically good. I disagree that uh, DBD is mechanically easy. I think the flaw is relatively low depending on what you play, but um, I don't think it's easy. And the reason why you can get away with winning while still not being that good is because of the matchmaking, nothing else. So the matchmaking is... I, I, it's, it's really a common thing, and yeah, um, it elevates a lot of these things. No matter what I did, my KD was usually barely over one when I used to play shooters. But in DBD, I can win most of my games with mostly just knowledge and experience, which is yeah what drew me toward yeah. it in the first place. So yeah, that's because of the matchmaking. It's enabled by the matchmaking, and yeah, like DBD is not a place for competitive players in general. Like, okay, what am I saying here? So DVD is not made for competitive players. Does that mean you can't enjoy it in such a fashion? No, absolutely not. You can absolutely do whatever you want with it. But... When a bunch of players start talking about skill expression so often in a game where you... <laughs> what is that? No mind games? Face cam visually You can stunned. probably win most matches after like 500 hours if you have decent video game experience and don't follow the other side's rulebook. Of yeah. course, it seems really silly. In most games and sports, the top players have 10,000 plus hours in extremely precise mechanics. In DBD, you could probably get there in a thousand if you actually practiced correctly and just watched videos to gain the necessary knowledge. So I disagree with this. I don't think this is true. Um, I think that people who have incredible mechanics, I would recommend if you actually want to see someone like for when it comes to survival pathing, who's exceptional and way better than almost anyone else. Um, I would recommend you to go watch Granot on YouTube and watch how he paths on Survivor and how beautifully he does it and how he's just like a little bit above the rest. And I think in 1000 hours, there's no way you're going to get good at DBD. So in something like a shooter, you can actually transfer skill from other games and you can get good in like a reasonable time frame. Um, simply because I know what crosshair placement is, I know how to move my mouse, I know the mechanics, and I can transfer the skill from one game to the other. So if a new shooter releases, I will already be relatively good. Not that good anymore because I don't play much shooters anymore, but you get the just. The thing about DVD is there's no skill transfer because DVD is so incredibly unique. So how long does it actually take to compete with the pros? Like in the most simple fashion, M1 Chase. In DBD. So we hosted a 1v1 tournament, sorry, we hosted a 1v1 tournament recently, and there was one godlike talent in there, PXPX, who was actually a top tier 1v1 player with 3000 hours, and that was considered ridiculous. And people thought he was cheating because that seemed to be so impossible to be able to win the mind games. I think you can tell someone the theory of 1v1ing or like chase on a simple M1 killer without any power. Um, probably in 50 hours, but he's going to have no chance anyway, even if he knows the um, basics, because he will not have the decision making. He will, he will not be able to execute and he will have stand no chance at all. I think with 1000 hours, no matter what you do, there's no way you're going to be good. I don't think so. Like good is obviously like relative, right? But top tier, let's say you will not compete with anyone who's actually the best in the world. Videos to gain the necessary knowledge. The second reason is that most DBD players are kind of bad at the game. True. I think the game is overly, it's like, it's a casual game at heart. I think people have a point when they are like, that Badella is a party game. I think a lot of people inside the comp bubble fail to, um, fail to realize that or they don't want to hear it because they're inside their own bubble, right? Does that mean that you shouldn't play DBD anymore? You can't enjoy it however you want? No, but like a little bit of self-awareness on how others 
um, see it is, goes a long way, and that's why we went over with the Twitter polls, right? And I think he made valid points. Um, it, there, there's a lot of condescending, and these things, if someone says it, it always, always gets elevated. And there's a lot of elitism in DVD. That's just true. From an objective standpoint, I would say the main reason for this is that there's no way to practice mechanics of any kind on your own, and 95% of the player base is not going to waste time working on flashlight save timing with a friend in a custom game. Jabros, the elitism, I don't think it's like uh, exclusive to the comp scene, by the way. Um, I don't think that's true. That's that's like a DBD-wide problem that also goes into the comp scene. And it's also like a little bit ele elevated and enabled by the loose matchmaking because you can win a ridiculous amount of games in DBD. I don't think I've ever played another PvP game where I have such a high win rate consistently without even trying. Like literally, if I go play Killer right now and I literally just play completely chill and I don't even look at hook states, which I usually don't do, then I'll probably win 90% of my games, which is ridiculous. I'm not even trying. Like in a PvP game. Like, I, I don't have ever, ever played a PvP game where that was possible. So DBD is a bit unique in that aspect. All the experience most people have is from pubs where you might get four games an hour if you're lucky. And most players are totally fine with this. When everyone is bad, it all evens out and makes for exciting games. Unfortunately, the players that aren't fine with this are either the ones who are extra bad and will blame everything but themselves while demanding balance changes that would benefit them, or the players who have practiced DBD mechanics way too much and are now better. I think everyone everyone has uh, balance takes. If you have over 1,000 hours in the game, um, you're going to have opinions on things that is just normal because everyone is just realistically in their own bubble. That's just how it works. That is not comp exclusive, and you can see it every day um, when you look at... Uh, what people want for changes in the game. One thing that is oftentimes true though, um, for the lower experienced players, what you don't need is balance changes. You need to make the counterplay A, more accessible, or B, they need to realize what the counterplay is. So oftentimes what inexperienced players need is guidance, not balancing. Better than 99.9% .9 of players, not realizing that there's a lot of reasons that almost no one else does. When were the DVD comp scene realized no one cares about it? So I don't think um, this is, like, I honestly could not care less about it. Like, obviously, I want people to look at it, and if you like it, then you like it. If you don't like it, that's totally fine. But I always had weird hobbies in my entire life. Um, I remember when all my friends were playing football, I was, like, into cycling. And I still have a road bike, and I love love cycling. It's like everyone always told me, wow, that's so cringe. It's like I just personally just don't care what outsiders think or, like, or like you, you listen to music that is not mainstream and everyone's like, wow, why don't you listen to Taylor Swift and stuff? That? It's like, wow, I don't care. That's just my taste. And that's totally okay. And how relevant it is, I don't know, man. Like if you, we had 10,000 viewers on the tournament. I don't, like this feels like an ego battle to tell people how relevant it is, to be honest. So who really cares? Like if you want to believe that, that is totally fine. And if someone wants to play competitive for guys, bro, all the power to them. That's my honest opinion. If you want to do something, no matter what the haters say, just do it. If you don't hate, if you don't hate on anyone or you don't hurt anyone in the process, literally just do it. This is literally the elitist take the other way around, by the way. This is what we saw earlier from the Twitter posts, the other way around. Where um they're trying to make it seem like there's no reason for this to exist. And you can't really tell people why they play something. Like, this is not how it works. And yeah, well, if, if people have fun 1v1, then <laughs> let there be. This. I'll let you figure out which category comp players belong to. So I'll summarize the first issue with a metaphor. Have you ever started up a co-op game with friends, but you have that one guy who rushes endgame content as fast as possible to get ahead of everyone else? It kind of sucks the fun out of it for the people who have to play with them. And that's kind of how people feel about competitive DVD players. Most of us can agree that playing against a killer or survivor team that is way better than you is really unfun in this game. Is this fair to complain about? In my opinion, not really. Do I understand why people complain about it? Absolutely. But I think what really annoys most people about comp DVD in particular is the fact that comp players seem to be unaware of how funny their bubble really is. Like, I don't, I mean, to be honest. Like, they made up a game mode with the I mean, okay, you can, you can, one running is not something that is DBD related, by the way. Like, it's just it's normal. It's just like isolating, isolating the, I don't know, whatever. Like, in, in shooters, it would be the aim. In this game, it's the chase. 
Like the uh, one v running is not really something that's like unique to DBD at all. Like they made up a game mode with their own made up rules. It's like I don't know. Like I can rules, and somehow <laughs> that makes them better than. It's actually funny. Like no one understands that. Everyone that's who fair. just plays this game normally. Reminder. I mean, it's like Steve didn't choose this, by the way. Like I, I, I think this is totally unfair, by the way. So. I don't know if True Talent pulls up Steve's profile on his stream and be like, he can't compete because Steve has filters and he doesn't. I don't know. Then I think it's fair to 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 ask him to compete with filters. I think that's totally fair. That's a fair point. Like, uh, if he doesn't want one run, that's fair. Like, obviously, one run is like the only way you have to compete, right? But it's like Steve. I don't think Steve like wants to go into his lobby. Like, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't want to get into this too much. There's not point of this but i think there's a point here to be had their own and, but they also have a point because one v one in dvd is just very very isolated and this is not what the game is all about right it's only about chase but dvd has so much more so much more that's like i uh, like only talking about like shooting goals in football this is not how it works like that's not what makes someone good right made up rules and somehow that makes them better than everyone who just plays this game normally. Reminder, pubs is literally the only game mode in DBD with progression, rewards, achievements, sure. and the only game mode that developers care about, as shown by them leaving tons of spectator bugs in custom games for months now. No, okay, so I can tell you as a consultant, I have a little bit, like people do care. So the thing about DBD and like bugs is just like, the okay, if you play DBD, you might have realized how buggy it is over the long time and obviously like stuff like the wraith um it's not ideal but there's so many bugs especially in custom games and they add on and they add on and if you want to fix those bugs then you will need to not fix something else dvd has like such a long list of bugs um that it's like like they will never get to the bottom of it so the only way to fix these kind of bugs is to put them to the top and yeah i mean i mean i'm sure everyone here can think of like five bucks in the game right now that are super annoying if you have like a lot of hours and obviously yeah well um hopefully they're gonna get fixed i hope so i'm praying for it uh, because custom games i think they deserve more love but it's generally i think it's a lack of development power that's it and like a focus on new content and bug fixing and yeah that just doesn't have priority in the Padelite. That is not custom game exclusive. That also happens in the normal game. I'm leaving tons of spectator bugs in custom games for months now. Everything you do in customs is just something you made up. Just like every tournament win that <laughs> you notch on your Twitch about page is made up by someone else. Yeah, well, I mean, that's... Okay, I, I think I think we're reaching a bit here. Like, you're absolutely right. Like, the validity, validity of these things uh, depend on... Um, who made it and if there was actual competition so That's even true. if you but it's like yeah i mean we, we're all competing for pixels on the screen right like if you're being real like nothing here really matters i don't know that's i find that a bit of a weird point but yeah if you if you think like nothing matters spectator bugs and, and like comp dbd doesn't matter you're probably awesome. right yeah like nobody aren't living here and even if you win like a bunch of tournaments it does not really matter that much yeah even if you put it on your profile. But I think this is something for people to be proud of because they invest a lot of hours. I think it's totally valid. That's my point on uh, my take on this. Page is made up by someone else. So even if you are technically right about your opinions on... True. I, to some degree, I mean... On pub players? This is... I think this is true, actually. So I think this is a true statement. Um because the matchmaking is so so damn loose in dead by daylight and that's what you even said earlier where you can win so many games if you have 500 hours and that's not because the game is simple it's just because the matchmaking just caps out really early that's like the only reason for that and yeah well if you actually want to get good to play against good players if that's what getting good for you is maybe it's hitting clips nobody can tell you what that means in the first place and that's the beauty of it you can whatever you want to do in dbd you can do it and i think yeah that's one important thing to take away from this whatever you want to do do it if it's comp if it's casual blah 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 whatever 
but like having a little bit of respect for the other side is all that matters. Players, even if it technically is a skill issue that someone's complaining. <laughs> okay, that's a bit of a funny take because like playing comp in itself is also pretty much a waste of time. Like I used to play comp, um, but I, I can't do it anymore. So the thing about playing comp is uh, the amount of hours you invest is quite high. So I would guess um, when I was practicing for tournaments, I think we did like 15 hours maybe a week with scrimming, waiting for tournaments, playing tournaments, these kind of things. And it's just unfeasible. If I want to do Twitch and YouTube both, then I cannot do this. And while I was playing comp, my YouTube did pretty much not exist because I did nothing for YouTube. At some point, I was like, okay, I cannot do this anymore. It's unfeasible. This is my full-time job. And if you make your hobby your job, then you need to make rough decisions. And I had to cut that hobby because the time investment is ridiculous. And I think most people will agree with that. Like the time you invest into comp is really, really high. Someone like Nightlight obviously can stream it and he's making money from it and he kind of made us his job. But yeah, so comp in itself does not make a lot of money. To be honest, I think the spring invitation was probably when it comes to like, no, actually the B of TB was probably better. But like when it comes to like how much you have to play and how much money you can earn, I don't think there was much many tournaments were higher. And yeah, well, I, I spent a lot of money on that. And yeah, wasn't probably wasn't the smartest thing. If you if you had like a finance guy, he would probably tell me what the fuck are you doing, hence. But yeah, sometimes you have to follow your passion. About no one cares. What people do care about is results. Let me explain. Let's say you have a pub killer or a pub swift who brings the most disgusting broken builds and wins every public game, and a comp killer or comp team that brings whatever and wins every public game. No one really cares about the fake skill of the former. They're both winning every game in the only game mode that the developers made. And I disagree with this. I I just disagree. So okay, let, let's say this. Let me a pub swift so, who so if you bring these kind of things, right, the interactivity is like close to zero. No matter what the killer does, he's just gonna like, he's gonna lose. There's no interactivity in this game. Like this is not. Because like the killer is gonna find someone, it's preschool, he's not gonna interrupt any gens, then the other gens are just gonna pop and that's it. And the game's over. Like why do people enjoy this? I have no clue. Like why, like at that point, why play DBD? I mean, it's like maybe they just wanna win and literally everything they care about is winning. But I, I just cannot understand that, to be honest. Like, if I play against this, I will also be like, what what are you guys doing? Like, what is the point of this? And yeah, well, I mean, if you don't match that kind of mindset and you play in the most boring way possible, then you pretty much have no chance. No. Funny thing is they even spawn as far away from the killer and together. Why? That makes no sense, bro. Do you even have proof? No, you don't even have proof. Brings the most disgusting broken builds and wins every public game. And a comp killer or comp team that brings whatever and wins every public <laughs> game. No one really cares about the fake skill of the former. They're Actually, can you write that in the comments? Do you guys not care? Like, I'm honestly curious. ...of the former. They're to me, to me, if you win with nothing, there's going to be a lot of interactivity and the game mode is very unforgiving. And if you play in such a way, then I, I totally respect that, to be honest. I do respect that. Or comp team that brings whatever and wins every public game. No one really cares about the fake skill of the former. They're both winning every game in the only game mode that the developers made. And Is it actually true? Does nobody care? I'm actually curious. Of story. The players on the other side of those games got shit on equally. But no, but the thing is, no, that's the difference though. One side had a lot of chances and like interactivity. Like I presumably, right? Right. We're only looking at screenshots of the end game. But I think one side had chances and opportunities and the other just didn't because they lost the moment they loaded into the game, which is always like, yeah, well, it's not the best. I really think that bothers comp players because they're constantly talking about Yeah, okay, that tweet didn't age well. The pub players did really, really well on this. Um, we actually did not have such a group that sends themselves to preschool every game, which I was kind of hoping for, to be honest, when I put this tweet out. But none of them uh, messaged me, but we had really, really good pub teams, and they showed that they can actually compete, which I find found really interesting. About the ego of pub players who are crutching on things that comp players think are OP. This leads them to constantly respond to people who don't really care what the comp community thinks. 
and it always follows the logic of if you lost, skill issue. If you won, you were using broken shit, and it's still a skill issue. The best example of this is when a comp player loses in pubs. Let's look at Momo 7th, a player for the comp team Petroleum, after losing his 1,947 win streak with Blight in public games. Despite being understandably upset after having such a long streak broken, once the endgame chat starts, he immediately says, Scrim? Which to me might as well say, Well, you beat me in the unbalanced luck based game, now come prove it in a real game. To which one player hilariously responds, Nah, I'm good. Comp players really don't understand how funny it is to challenge random pub players to scrims and 1v1s, but the truth is that no one really cares about how skilled you are in a balanced version of the game that you made up. And to accept this truth? That would mean admitting that you've spent thousands of hours obtaining skills that even the developers don't care about. But I mean, it's a, I don't think it's important. I don't know if I'm crazy for this take. Like, I don't think it's that important what other people think about what I do. Like, like maybe I care about your opinion. Like, maybe there are people I care about. But if you tell me, wow, hence what you do is cringe and everything you do is cringe, like, I will, I will naturally, at first, I will probably not care. One thing that is quite important about this is that... This was also a comp team, by the way. So he didn't ask pub players to for a scrim. He asked comp players. So if you spend 1,900 games and you... He was doing a 24-hour stream, by the way. It was like 18 hours into a 24-hour stream. So he was probably like extremely tired in this game. And yeah, well, I mean, I would be upset too. But yeah, it's uh, he maybe has a point that like... It's all about the ego at that point. That's why you ask. Because you're like, wow, I'm better than you guys. Thousands of hours obtaining skills that even the developers don't care about. But here, any comp player might be pulling the they aren't a real comp player card, similar to the no true Scotsman fallacy. The implication is that only the lower tier comp players go around stomping pubs and challenging randoms and annoying everyone on Twitter, and the top comp players would never do that. All right, so um, this is actually a, a fair point. When do you start being a comp player? So if I play um, a, charity, a charity tournament, am I a comp player? Because I played in a competitive event of Dead by Daylight. Maybe. And everyone has their own definition for that. And for me, to be a comp player, you actively play tournaments and you actively, yeah, you actively play tournaments. I don't know if I would call if you play the first tournament that you're a comp player already. I don't know. But everyone can decide that for the th themselves. And what is a comp player and what isn't is up for debate. And people call me comp players. I don't, I don't think I'm a comp player. I would not call myself a comp player. I don't play actively. I don't scrim. I don't play in tournaments. I have done that in the past, but I've not done it in a while. And I, I would not consider myself a comp player. Like maybe, yeah, it depends on the definition, but I, I would not consider myself. I'll let Nightlight, one of the best comp players in the scene, explain it himself. It is because of the low tier, like pl players from low tier teams just trying to have an ego from winning public matches. And yeah, yeah. they are bringing the sweatiest shit, shit talking everyone. It's yeah. always the bad players from comp that shit that talk the most. Right. You will Plus. never see any of us, for example, go in the pub game and like full on shit on someone. Never. The problem I have with this is that one, you admit that lower tier comp players have yapping issues that give everyone else a bad reputation. So it's still a problem that you should look to fix in the community if you're trying to grow it in a positive way. I think it's just a matter of beating down, to be perfectly honest. I don't think it's a low tier comp player problem. Comp players in general have ego in Dead by Daylight. The other part of this is that only. Yeah, and I don't think it's like low comp player related. Only like two to three teams win consistently, and Nightlight is on one of them. So to him, anyone under him, no. which is like 99% of the comp. Alright, where does it start? So I can, I can probably give you a good idea. So there's like. The three teams win generally different tiers in comp. On one of them, so to him, anyone under um, all of these are under him, which is like uh, all of these. I would call all of these probably tier like one teams. Ninety-nine percent of drama or oh boys. So the top eight are probably yeah. That's what I would consider really strong, and everything that's below this, I've never heard of them. These are probably like inexperienced teams that don't consistently play tournaments, and they would probably lose round one. That's what he's talking about. People will play tournaments, but they're not really inside the circle. The comp community is probably a yapper, but two, he implies that top players would never get ego from pubs like these lower tier players do. Okay, let's take a look at Team Eternal, which Nightlight plays for, doing a four-man escape streak in public games. Now they played this really fair, no repeated perks and trying to get all four players out with some amazing games. 
But in came an ultra meta nurse to stomp on them, and you can hear how upset it makes him, presumably because it's someone egoing in pubs. I'm playing against Eternal, oh my god. King Moron is a bro. Guys, I'll get ego from pubs because I can make it. Plus Why is scale tilting? I 4k yeah, the Eternal of Spinaurus, look at me. All right, fair enough. I mean, a meta nurse stomps like 99.99% of public lobbies. So, like Momo7, they challenge the nurse to a DBD League rule set match, where the nurse still gets a respectable 2k with nine hook stages against the best team in comp DBD history, after which Nightlight deleted the VOD, which is always a funny move when you accuse others of having an ego. I've watched a good amount of yeah, comp. I mean, uh, that's pretty cringe. Uh, the thing, I think what Nightline is really upset about here is that the guy's sniping the streak, which... A streak that is like pretty easy, but obviously um, people are going to play pubs and they are going to try, especially content creators. Players play public games now and the general feeling I get is that a lot of them are terrified to lose to a random pub player, which if they really believe DBD was just a big RNG fest, they wouldn't even care about. Even in solo queue, where... So I think generally the majority of comp players are hyper competitive people and competitiveness can easily, easily turn into toxicness very, very easily. And you can see toxic things out of competitive drive. Um, I've seen it a bunch. Uh, I've also had that. Like when I used to play League a long time ago, um, I also, like, I was not the nicest guy. Let's put it that way. I didn't, I don't know. I, I didn't, like, there's a difference, right? Like, I don't know. If you play solo queue, you can obviously always blame your teammates. But at some point, I think when you grow older, you just realize it's just childish and there's no, no point in it. Everyone knows you can lose to things completely out of your control. He gets mad at pub players egoing, nodding at the killer right here, but when the killer nods back... So this guy just aimed into the fucking ground. Well, like, you have the guy DC on five gens. Why do you have an ego? Why, why do you have an ego? Unlucky. Why is he not in bro? He is literally the worst fucking slinger player of all time. I'm playing with three fucking monkeys on my team. So yeah, I don't know if I buy the idea that yeah, it's only that, the... That is obviously hyper, uh, hypocritical. And yeah, I think Nightline needs to reflect on that. Because yeah, if he if he provokes the slinger player first, then he um, should probably not insult him. And that's also one thing about being an influencer, I think, more so than a comp player, um, that you should, like, try to lead by example and be a good example. And I think you failed to do that there. Or to your comp Yeah, I think, I think, absolutely. Okay, I'll be honest. I think, like, most of DVD comp from the player side have some kind of ego issues. And I think there's also part of it because DVD is a lot about predicting the opponent. And if you think you're going to lose, you're literally going to lose in a tournament. There's no way you win if you think you're going to uh, lose, in my opinion. That's what I thought as a player. And yeah, to be honest, like if you need to think you're going to win, otherwise you're not going to win, which is a bit weird, but... I don't know, uh, does it work that, like, that way in every game? players who have an ego. Back Not when sure. the infamous 3-gen Skull Merchant match happened, you could tell Nightlight was taking it much more seriously than the troll merchant player CM9i was, even after they won. I mean, the... Okay, so... I think Nightlight took the bait here, to be perfectly honest. Uh, because the guy was, like, like hard, hard trash-talking first. Um, I don't know, but yeah. He definitely took the bait merchant player CM9I was, even after they won. I mean, the <laughs> dude backed out of his bet to go bald if X9 won the latest big t oh, my bad. tournament. So I think, two hours, I think this is hype up for an event. I think that is uh, different. Uh, I appreciate that because that's part of the part of the thing, right? So we are all, we are as a grassroots comp scene um, with no backing. Uh, we do it ourselves and yeah. Um, it, it was hype up. It made the world thing more hype. Maybe you should have followed through with it. Just go bald. But yeah. That's pure front runner ego right there. And you know what's the funniest thing about- I don't know if that's front runner ego. I mean, I, I can see why you take it that way. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that one. Both Momo and Eternal's pub game losses. They were both from other comp players stream sniping them yeah so it literally is just comp players egoing each other in pubs over nothing i don't think the comp player thing is that important to be perfectly honest here it's like like you say over nothing but like streaks is like a time investment it's an artificial stake right like you might not care and that's totally fine um but if you invest time and you want to get it high 
then obviously it, it feels like someone robbed you. If someone literally stripes, snipes a streak, like I don't know about the Momo one because I think it's fair because Momo used extremely strong stuff, but like getting a foreman out against a nurse who knows your objective and brings perks to counter it, like you, you just lose, you have no chance because the streak is so hard. Like, and that's the problem with such streaks because it's easily snipeable and you pretty much have no chance anymore if if they get sniped, which, yeah. Yeah, I mean, deleting the ward is obviously not the move, but at the same time, I can understand. But yeah, no, nine stages, not too bad. Yeah, I can see why casual players don't think too highly of the competitive scene. Bei Amazon entdeckst du elektrisierende Angebote. Finde no, täglich tausende tolle Angebote auf Amazon. Bro. Okay, but enough pseudo psychoanalysis on the comp player ego. Let's talk about another reason a lot of people don't like comp DBD. They worry that comp players' very optimal gameplay tactics, that is, tunneling, camping, and taking every advantage, are spreading to public matches as comp gets more popular. Say someone watches a tournament and notices how every killer immediately goes for the tunnel out as fast as possible. Is it not a reasonable expectation that they might take this energy to public games that they want to win in? Yeah, absolutely, but that's, uh, sweating in games, including that by the net, is not a crime. If comp keeps growing like it is, more and more players will play like this in public lobbies. And like I said earlier, it's pretty clear that the public player base is just not prepared for this type of gameplay. You can. I don't think, okay, I think like this, like such an overgeneralization happening here. There are people who are willing to do it and there are people who don't mind playing against it at all. And it's like, I don't know. Like you might play comp and you still don't mind getting tunneled or you might not play comp and you still like getting tunneled because you just enjoy the aspect of chase. So it's like, I don't know. This is like not everyone who like tries in the by daylight necessarily plays comp because it's such a crazy time investment. So there are people who are not comp, but they're still interested in sweaty gameplay. There are quite a lot of them actually. So that's one thing that needs to be clearly, clearly separated. Try it out for yourself to see what I mean. But here I actually kind of take the side of the competitive players. Dude. It's not their fault for optimizing the game that they were given. Tunneling has been the best strategy for eight years and counting. Yeah. If people do it in public games, that's a developer problem for incentivizing it. Not so, okay, the problem with tunneling and camping in public games is that it's way easier to do than it is to counter. If you put like five 50 hour players into a match and like one tunnels out the survivor the survivor is going to be lost following someone is just way easier than actually pathing in a way where you can loop it's just way harder the person is probably going to panic and they're probably going to lose so on the low level camping and tunneling are op but on the high level they are a necessity to make the game work and that is like at that point it is actually a design problem you can't really balance this because you would like make it more unbalanced on either side. So no matter who you choose, you're going to have a problem, right? Because the other side is not going to be happy. So if you make camping, okay, camping doesn't matter. Like the thing uh, I'm interested in is getting one person out. That's what everyone is really interested in. If you make that too weak, then killers will just not stand a chance anymore because you need to force the 3-1 to have a chance on the high level. That's what we talked about earlier. But yeah, on the low level, it's just way too easy. And yeah, that is a problem that is incredibly hard to fix. If you have an idea for that, like I would love to hear it. And I th I'm sure so would the game designers of that by daylight. But yeah, it's just not easy. Not the competitive players. I tend to agree that a lot of players have an idea of what DBD should be that doesn't match up at all with what it is. I think the problem with playing efficiently on Dead by Daylight is that it removes the interactivity from the game. So that is true. If you play Survivor and you sneak and you pre-run, then there's not that much interactivity to be found. If you play Killer, you kind of want to get someone on the hook and then give them no chance anymore to like loop you, right? Because you they come off the hook, they're injured, they have 10 seconds and maybe they can make something happen. Maybe you have a killer to, that denies that. But in general, I think DBD loses what makes it so fun, especially for casuals, if it's played efficiently. And that's where the disconnect kind of comes from, in my opinion. Is. And here, comp players have done a much better job of accepting what it is, at least its core design. Does that go as far as having filters? I don't necessarily think this is true. I think this just like the design just makes sense on the high level. It doesn't make sense on the low level. For every map in the game to give yourself every possible advantage? No, I still think they're huge nerds for that. That's fair. I mean, it is allowed. 
Um, yeah, well, I honestly don't care. Like to be honest, like I don't, I don't really understand There's that. For energy. every map, like if you if you don't care about, um, <laughs> I mean, I can I can kind of see it. Like sure, like you you want to level playing field and you don't want to switch filters every game. Fair, but yeah. In the game to give yourself every possible advantage no. i think that the game in itself is just way too dark for my liking i don't use these kind of filters i don't switch every time but i have also have brightness and vibrance which arguably make the game easier for me but the reason why is not necessarily because it gives me an advantage i honestly do not care that much about like winning in the ballet in general like it's not it's not in my high school like don't get me wrong i, I like winning everyone does in pvp games but it's not my highest priority and i just like looking at the game but generally, I can understand the point that at some point, if you do everything for an advantage, then it becomes cringe. That's fair, but it's allowed. So at that point, I don't care. So to be honest, in my opinion, you should hate the players. No, you should. Oh, my God. Don't hate the players. Hate the game. If you want this to change, tell that to the developers. Maybe reshade can get changed in such a way. I don't think it's like the craziest thing to ask for. Maybe we can get brightness, vibrance. Like, all I care about is brightness and vibrance, right? Like, I want my colors vibrant. I want the map to not be that dark. Because if you see at the very beginning... Job ...of accepting what it is, at least it's core design. Does that go... This is so dark, bro. Like, I don't like looking at this. ...for every map in the game to give yourself every... Okay, I don't want to go off topic too much, but I also have, like, a window right next to my PC that I cannot possibly close. Okay, I could get probably... Like, it's a slanted window, right? I don't think I could get curtains, Impossible but I'm sure advantage. I could... No, I cut it off some way, but the the way I do it is just like light thinks people don't like. Uh, I just make the money more bright. Comp. So let's recap a bit. He says that low tier comp players both have an ego and run around stomping pub. I think it's true for every comp player. Every comp player has an ego. Period. Like I think this is factually a statement because if you don't have an ego, you could not compete. Oops. We both agree on that. This implies that high tier comp players don't have an ego in pubs. Well, I disagree. On which I disagree. I mean, it's like in pubs, right? Like this. Wait, no. In... no. no. But finally, he says that top comp players themselves are being accused of stomping pub games like this. I mean, no, obviously not. High tier comp players don't stomp with metal bots. This is what I didn't see in the first video that I uploaded, by the way. I didn't see this point at all, which is why my reaction made zero sense afterwards. But I, I this is a ridiculous statement. Obviously, they do. Like, bro, like, open your eyes. This, which will always. It's like, I mean, what does stomping mean, right? Like stomping kind of, to me, implies you do it just to win and just to humiliate your opponent. Just be vehemently I don't know. denied by them. Right. You will Plus. never see any of us, for example, go in the pub game and like full on the shit on someone. Never. But top comp players do stream pubs every once in a while. So let's take a look. Here's. I think, to be honest, okay, I think, yeah, I don't know what Nightline meant there, but obviously... Yeah, I don't know. Like now, that right makes no sense. Obviously, public lobbies with one of the best builds yeah. there is. And obviously, no Nightlight plays really strong builds, and he did that video, and obviously he plays strong stuff in pubs. That's natural. And I also think the for the people buckle up thing where people like bled out. It's like I think that's cringe, bro. Like, don't hate the player, hate the game. Like, if it's in the game, then and it's legal, then you should be able to use it. No, it's not enough to just win. He has to make sure they have... Doesn't mean that you can't complain about it. Don't get me wrong. And I surely... If I get all the people back up, I'm also like, Rot! I hate this. But yeah, it's it's very important to not focus on the player that it's more about the mechanic itself. No pub ego. Here's V1 crushing 44 lobbies in a row with a quad slowdown wraith build. Yeah, so the point of this was to uh, do a streak. That is... Uh, he wanted to 4k at three gens left. And that's what the street counter is and the top. Um, this was about 4K with at least three gens left. And he got 40, I think it was 44 games in total. That is ridiculous. Um, actually, massive achievement. And I, I kind of liked him doing that because it opened my eyes on how good Wraith really is. So there's a purpose to this. Is this stomping? I guess, I mean, you're hardcore winning, right? Like, I don't know how to define that word. I'm not a native speaker. I don't know if... To me, stomping kind of implies you do it just to do it. But yeah, maybe maybe my English is not good enough for that. V1 crushing 44 lobbies in a row with a quad slowdown wraith build. One of the top teams, Elysium, played a bunch of pubs with some of the most broken builds available. Yeah. Although I admit this didn't go like they planned. So what they tried to do was uh, they tried to zero hook um, 
They tried to zero hook multiple games in a row, but it didn't work. But yeah, they always had really, really strong builds. And I think, like, obviously, people are going to use whatever is available. That's just how it is. So I think that's fair, and comp players can also use whatever is available. I think the statement is just generally untrue. Here's Zeno, considered by many to be one of the best all-around players in competitive DBD right now, destroying a lobby with one of the best killers in the game and bleeding everyone out while throwing snowballs at them on day one of the winter event, while a chat filled with the comp community cheers him on across multiple games. Yeah, um, that was incredibly cringe. I told him that uh, you shouldn't do that. I think these kind of things, they could maybe get sanctioned. So the thing is, DBD just doesn't have the overhead structure for these kind of things. Um, every tournament organizer does their own thing. And bro, like as a tournament organizer, dude, I have so many better things to do than look at every clip. Like obviously, like if you would do that in league, like hard troll the game like that, you would get banned by the uh, Riot Games, right? Like you would actually get banned from competing. I think you should because like this is, this is like grossly failing what you should do as an influencer with like a community. I think you should encourage this kind of thing. I think it's just wrong and it's bad like don't get me wrong slugging by itself is a game mechanic you can do but if you literally just slug people to slug them and like to waste their time and to make them miserable at that point it's ridiculous and bad and i think these things maybe maybe they should get called out more often right now there's no such structure in comp maybe uh, the tournament organizers should get together and maybe start policing these kind of things. That's the only way we, I could possibly see it. But I can also tell you that a lot of the tournament organizers want to do their own thing and they don't want to get told what to do by others. And that's just a problem where everyone doesn't want to lose influence. And at that point, it's really hard. And who's, who's going to be there to police these things? But yeah, I think this is horrible and you should not do these things. I think in general... Anything that's like grossly BMing is just not okay. These players are all indisputably top comp players. Is it their right to do this? No, it's not. So the moment, the moment you, I don't know, like, I, I don't think this is necessarily comp related, but as an influencer, especially with a huge audience, I think you have like a certain, you shouldn't, I don't know. I, I don't think you should do those things. And especially if you have an audience, that's something that took me a while to get uh, aware of too. Um, what you say in front of that audience to make, especially if you make people look bad, is just bad because like, yeah. Sure, I guess it's clip. all within the confines of the game. Should they keep claiming they never do this? Bitch, bitch, yeah, bitch, yeah, bitch, yeah, bitch. So, okay, that's... Like, if there's no, if there nothing happened before that, right? Like, if the plague didn't, like, try to bleed him out or whatever, didn't hump him or whatever, and this literally just happened and there was no negative interaction before, then that is incredibly cringe. Being a Saw winner is just not okay and generally a horrible, horrible thing to do. He was probably just happy that he got the vault, but yeah, you shouldn't insult. Especially if you have an audience, you, you shouldn't do those things and you shouldn't, yeah, you should avoid them. I think that's something that, Nightlight should probably take away from this that, yeah. Kai. You need to be take more responsibility for what you do. I don't think this, like, I don't think I would DQ him for a tournament for that. Yeah, but yeah. Well. Probably not. Again. As the biggest DBD comp streamer, I think you should lead by example. And I think it's also kind of your job to close the gap between casual and comp because that's what you are if you're if you're that big then you have a lot of casual audience and i think not feeding the stereotypes would be massive massive to opening it back up and reduce the gap between the casuals and the comp players and comp players get very defensive at the prospect of losing in pubs and will often accuse anyone who beats them or even wins a chase against them of egoing in an unbalanced game or crutching on broken you know one thing i kind of like dislike about this i kind of see where he's coming from but like you can't just group comp players as a wall like is that fair to do maybe it is but there's so many people who don't do that and their clips won't get elevated and their clips will not get shown in this video right and the bad examples are just the ones that stick out i don't think that will ever change if a comp player sends something stupid on twitter it's gonna get a lot of likes it's gonna get quote tweets and it's generally gonna blow up which is a horrible horrible thing i hope that's gonna change 
or like maybe at least like the top tier comp players don't say as many stupid things and the elitist takes i hope they really go away because we need them to go away to make this scene better good mechanics and i'll throw them a bone they're technically correct that they would win in a pure skill game but to everyone looking in from the outside, this just reeks of insecurity. The public relations from the players on social media aren't much better. Ultimately, they are allowed to say whatever they want on personal accounts, but as someone who works in marketing, it does hurt a bit to see them consistently make polarizing, rude, or aggressive yeah. tweets that people- I mean, these are young people, right? But will obviously associate with comp, whether that's fair or not. Watch any deep- I mean, it's like, okay, that's, that's all like, I don't wanna get, like, these are political tweets, I don't wanna respond to that, but like, these are things you shouldn't say publicly or at all to be honest League live stream or comp and i think some people just should literally just get off twitter the thing is if you say something stupid then it's just gonna get elevated chat and people will make the same jokes over and over about no skill tunneling camping etc all of which boil down to this is what the average person would say watching this isn't that so funny turn on <laughs> i mean so you can't have like actual like uh, dude like I'm sorry but if you actually watch GBD League especially when they started getting more views like it was unbearable because it's like the same thing it said over and over again what do you do then like I don't know you can't you can't let it rule right that's the problem so yeah I can kind of understand why that's a thing and if you say that then everyone's like haha maybe I I don't think this should be the case um i mod my tournament chat differently I, um i don't know if you noticed that you were part of it but yeah i try to have like a more positive attitude and if people had actual questions then they were gonna get answered if people flame then they're gonna get banned and so many people got banned in that tournament why like even from the comp community why because i just want the tournament not to look like that and i tried my absolute hardest and i told the comp players like some sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, um, but I wanted to professionalize it a little bit. If that worked, I don't know, but that was like one of the things I wanted to do with the invitational: have the players be respectful, have the chat be respectful. If someone had questions, actually answer them on any comp player's stream for five minutes. I guarantee you. But DBD League, one thing to take into account: DBD League does not want to be an entry point but it absolutely is an entry point to comp but dbd league wants to be the the absolute peak of dbd and the other leagues who professionalize or like specialize in being entry level they're just not as big one example would be otofu scrims he streams on twitch every friday doing scrims another example would be otf they have a beginner league and they're happy to answer your questions cotf is also more beginner friendly so there are a lot of organizations who focus more on the beginner side dbd league is just not one of them you will see jokes in the chat about True Talent or Zeb89, who they consider high ego pub players for lack of a better term. Mention I don't, I just disagree. Like, I, I think there are places where you can do this, but like, as a generalization, I disagree with this. High ego pub players for lack of a better no. term. Mentioning these guys is the comp players version of Nerf Pig. No, I don't think, I don't think, okay, I will not get into this too much. Get to be spammed at any moment. <laughs> yes. No. For maximum hilarious impact. You could look at this two ways. One is that it's good. So I disagree with that. I don't think this is like the only uh, something that comes up very often. Sure, like, I don't know, sometimes. I mean, it comes up, yes, but it's it's not like the main focus. Nobody focuses on this. And I think, especially from the comp community, I don't think many people care about those. Like, obviously, like, Zap had the thing with Dan, where he accused Dan of cheating, and then he said every comp player is like a cheater. I, I mean, that's just laughable. Like, obviously. Like, at that point, you just become a meme. If you say that every comp player is a cheater, then, yeah, well, I don't know. Good to gatekeep and keep your community only full of people who take the time to actually understand it. Or two, that it's maybe better to be friendly and helpful to newcomers who justifiably don't see why someone would want to watch what looks... So, why do you... Should I answer that? Why does every tournament... So, in general, tournaments are banned at first... Uh, uh, parks are banned at first to see how strong they are. And then they get banned for uh, different reasons. So if you give me a list, maybe I can answer that. If you guys are interested in that, would you like a video on why things are balanced the way they do? Maybe I can make that in the future. I'm uh, very open to maybe start a conversation and like maybe be a bit more of a bridge between the two gaps. I could definitely do a better job at that.
looks like just camping, tunneling, and pre-dropping pallets. Honestly, I understand both, because you don't owe rude first-time chatters anything, but I do wish that at the very least tournament staff wouldn't actively encourage it and just ban them instead. If any- foul. That's foul. I mean, the, you can't tell them. I don't know. Like, sure. You can say that, whatever. Whatever you want. I mean, DBD League has memed on that for, like, lo the longest time. Like, I've watched DBD League since, like, 2020, I think. So I've been there for a long, long, long time, and it's always been like this. It's like, it's just redundant. Nobody comes in there with good faith. Nobody comes in there with good faith. They're like, oh, my God, why are you guys noobs? Why are you telling on camp? Like, at that point, it's just not, like, a point where you can start an argument. You just cannot. And it's like, you can't really blame them for answering in bad faith when the entire argument is just bad faith. But, yeah, maybe... I don't know, like, this is just a player-run organization. Nobody's making money from this. Like, I don't know, like, I feel like you're talking about this from, like, a perspective where it's, like, this is all professional, and, like, too many people are doing this for a living. Nobody does. Everyone is there for passion. And DBD League is players making tournaments for other players. This is not content creators. This is really, really, really important to take into account. Thing. Recent videos and tournaments from big creators should prove that there is a ton of potential interest if comp is explained well enough to cynical first-time viewers. And True, I mean, that's what I did. This is why the Invitational exists in the first place. Because I wanted things to be differently. I also have visions and I have goals. And I don't think I hosted the Invitational from a content creator perspective because I want to grow. I think for me as a content creator, it would be better to not associate with comp. But I also have passion. I'm just a person. And I, like, what motivates me when it comes to content is actually my passion. That's my number one motivator. It's not actually stats, it's whatever. I've not looked at my Twitch stats in, like, literally a month. I don't know how many viewers I have. It's not important. Like, I'm I'm lucky enough that I can sustain myself. And however many people watch, they watch. That is okay. First time viewers. And let's be real. Even comp enjoyers can admit that a lot of different parts of it are pretty boring. But just like the killers and survivors... <laughs> So, yeah. Um, so, this is Midwich. Let me put some context to this. This is Midwich. I am going to guess that he... Yeah. Well, true. I love watching Bleed Out Supreme and Hatch Escapes. Yeah. No, I can generally agree. It's just hard to find a solution for this. This is hard. Like, sure. Like, we, everyone is interested, right? If you have a good idea for this, let me know. But most, I'm going to tell you, most of the things have been thought and talked about and have been deemed uh not re not reliable or uh, what is the word not feasible sorry they are pretty boring but just like the killers and survivors in dbd the hate from pub players makes comp players defensive which makes true. them hate on pub players true i think it's important to understand that everyone is in their own bubble and it's it's really really important to maybe look out of that and i think there's a lot of hate for both sides that is unnecessary and that needs to get bridged. Which makes pub players hate them, and the cycle continues. Of course, there are plenty of down-to-earth comp players who don't do all the stuff I just described, and you don't see their annoying posts because they aren't making them. Zaka and Dan from Team Eternal, the same team with Nightlight earlier, are very chill, even in pubs. Laser... Uh, I don't know. I don't think... <laughs> I find it a bit hard. Like, I don't know how much you watched of these. Described, uh, and you don't see their annoying posts because they aren't making them. Zaka and Dan from Team Eternal, the same team with Nightlight earlier, are very chill, even in pubs. Laser, Ivan... I think, to be honest, Team Eternal is extremely professional as a team. Uh, they're one of the easiest teams to work with. Some of them are easier than others. Some are more professional than others. There's no professional structures. The players just make the teams. Some of them are reliable and some aren't. And it's just some people are more annoying to deal with than others. And I can tell you that Eternal is always extremely professional. Um, Nightlight has definitely shown... Um, some hypocritical moments that Killer Wild showcased in this video that he needs to work on for sure, and especially as the biggest DVD content creator in the comms sphere, um, he should lead by better example. It's very important, and it's uh, good to good to showcase that. I hope he's going to take it to heart and uh, be a better example in the future. Pedro and Xyz are some more but I think I, I can tell you from experience 90% of these people are really nice you can go to any of their streams and if they have questions they're going to answer you 
like generally, if you approach people in good faith, they will give you answers. One hundred percent, guaranteed. Great players that don't cause trouble, as far as I'm aware. Multiple comp players don't play pubs at all, just 1v1 ladder and scrims. Although apparently the 1v1 ladder has its own whole drama, beef, and egoing going on. Of course. I mean, everyone, right? Like, I don't think comp can be necessarily um, uh, quantified in a group, right? Like, it's just different people from different backgrounds uh, come into the comp scene and they start playing there. And then obviously there's drama. There's so much drama. There's egos, everything. There are people getting accused of cheating as well i don't know they recognize that dbd is just a game and they don't get combative when people don't understand why they would play it this way but as with literally everything ever the loudest parts of the community set the tone for how the world sees them and they are unfortunately quite loud so what's my opinion of competitive dbd well i do watch the big tournaments and follow a few players so i definitely find it interesting overall but i still think the overall hey, that's my tournament scene has a lot of growing and growing up to do if they want to be respected by the majority of players. I will say that despite playing a game that doesn't really resemble live service. Yeah, um, I agree. I absolutely agree. There's a lot of growth to do. So like, I don't know, without an overhead structure, it's so hard though. It is incredibly hard. How do you fix that problem? How do you get that? So I don't think the tournament organizers want to get together. Uh, that's going to be a guess. I've not asked, but I don't think they want to. Um, because they would lose power. But generally, I think there needs to be more policing on stuff. And I think because people give comp a bad image if they do uh, bad things. And I think these bad things should be policed. If you want to be part of the tournaments, you need to behave. That is generally a good idea. There's no infrastructure that exists that way. And I, like, to some degree, obviously, I, I want to do that. And yeah, but at the same time, I know, dude. Like, the world tournament thing. Um, I already invest too much time, I'll be honest. I don't think it's feasible for me because the time I invest is not worth it. I don't think hosting tournaments is worth it. And I don't know if I want to make that any bigger. But, yeah. Maybe maybe there is something and maybe an overhead organization similar to the FIFA and football has to, has to happen to uh, make these things possible. Players, so I definitely find it interesting overall. But I still think the overall scene has a lot of growing and growing up to do if they want to be respected by the majority of players. I will say that despite playing a game that doesn't really resemble live service DVD at this point, comp players are a lot better than the average player in terms of general gameplay. In my opinion, if the comp scene wants to continue to grow, I think league and tournament organizers should heavily focus on- Dude, this is not easy. I- okay, you're asking, DBD League does not want to be the entry point of comp. They are not interested in doing that. And asking them to do that is not going to succeed. Um, because that's just not what they are. They are, they are the lead players with the lead balancing made for the best players. Like wanting the showcase, the best players in the best possible spot. There are other organizations that should be elevated and showcased that are more beginner level friendly, I think on a seamless and beginner friendly viewing experience which so far they have been improving and i think the top level players should try i mean we tried we tried to sh like maybe you've seen wait what was it we had a different uh scoreboard i think this one can still be improved we will improve on this we tried to make it better i think we made it more confusing next time we're gonna make it even better trust but we'll have we will try to make the ultimate scoreboard i'm working on that there are a lot of ideas um and it's quite frankly it's not that easy to be honest. I set a bit better example of not annoying everyone online and giving comp a bad rap. As well I think this is partly impossible because the, you will always have the, the bad X. Uh, because a, a group of a certain size will always have the bad X. You can try to repel them. You can try to get rid of them. But if what when someone says something stupid, they, it gets elevated into, into oblivion. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fight that is almost impossible. And yeah, even even in like such a small scale with the winter invitation, I was like, okay, nobody does anything bad. You end the game, you don't BM anything. It still happened. Like, yeah, well, I don't know. What can you do really? And giving comp a bad rap, as well as condemning lower tier players who try to do the same thing. Whether you play comp or not, or even if you've never heard of it before, I hope you felt this was a fair look at the scene and gave you some better understanding of why there's so much arguing about it. For what it's worth, all personal DMs, messages, and chats I've had with comp players were very helpful and friendly. And if you're looking to get into the community with an open mind, there will be more- <laughs> Bro, the fact that you DM'd Haunt just shows that, like, 
<laughs> I don't want to say anything, but Haunt is like known for being the bad boy that insults everyone. It's like, but if you are interested, you can approach almost anyone in good faith and they will actually give you answers. Like, in a 1v1, in a one on one, uh, that will almost happen. But the fact that you have Haunt here just shows. I don't know. Like it, it might not be more as than it welcoming. Seems. If you're just looking to watch comp, I recommend. Like no front to haunt, but like he's just he's young and <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You check out Comp DVD's YouTube channel, yep. which features the best games, tutorials, and highlights from the top players. If you're looking to actually play, V1 has a video that shows you the basics of joining that I'll True. link in the description. Very and good the one video. V1 ladder in the DVD League Discord has. True. I think if you're actually interested in getting better on DBD, I think the 1v1 ladder is unlikely the best place because you um, being good in chase is not everything, but it's it gives you a good foundation to improve on. I think the macro play is even, honestly, even more important. Um, but yeah, if you want to actually improve in chase and play against good players consistently without much waiting, then I would recommend you to do 1v1. Maybe you learn people from here and then you can go into the 4v1 and maybe... Uh, play with them. Plenty of help and tutorials available to get started. But the 1v1 ladder um, massively improved the skill in DBD. That is something that is quite crazy, but the skill overall on the top level has skyrocketed in the last two years. And I think this is halfway related to the 1v1 ladder and that consistently people consistently went against other good players there and that the chases has improved. I think two years ago, I could have reasonably been a DBD league killer and I would have probably at least been average, right? Like I could have been a general killer main for one of those teams two years ago. And I would have been, I would have never been the best, don't get me wrong. But I would have not stood out as being the worst either. I've played it a bit myself and everyone was really friendly, including one player even playing extra rounds just to help me learn more. Although they may be smug and annoying about it, I see no lies when comp players tell you that the fastest way to improve is to play 1v1s and scrims against people that will actually push you as a player. Whether this is actually worth doing for an asymmetrical horror game? <laughs> that's still up for debate. And unapologetic comp haters should be aware that comp is growing rapidly on YouTube, Twitch, and Discord as well as having behavior devs donating eerie shards True. to the Comp is uh, growing bigger. I think comp went a long way, even though there were a lot of things highlighted in this video that were examples of people like acting extremely badly. I think the ego thing has already improved, but we still have a long way to go. And maybe comp in general should have an overhead structure that uh, tells people what is okay and what isn't and how they have to act. Latest DBD League prize pool in big tournaments. After eight years of DBD, people are looking for more ways to play, and to lose out on all the fun potential just to keep stubbornly hating seems like a waste of time to me. So I think there's a lot of bad faith going on, even when it comes to comp, and one of the reasons is uh, that tunneling and camping or like general gameplay strategies like that are just like, like people say they take no skill and they're actually not wrong because on the low level, uh, it actually takes no skill because it's way easier to do than just to counter. And you got a fair point, but that's just not true on the high level. So both sides kind of have their point. And for one side, it's true inside their own bubble. And for the other, it just isn't. As with most arguments, both pub players and comp players could definitely do more to understand the other's point of view instead of just spamming insults at each other over Twitter. But I mean, come on, that's no fun at all. All right, that was Killer Whale's video. Amazing channel. Thank you so much uh, for highlighting the problems with the comp and uh, what it's all about. He has many other great videos. This one is it's an absolute juicer. If you want to watch one of him, I'll link it in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching. And I hope you learned some things. If you're interested in anything comp related, please leave it in the comments. Let me know. Maybe I can make a video on it or answer your questions. See you next time.